We are okay. recording now. Hari Ram, I have been so, so excited all day about this. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? <laughs> that smile. <Very> good. Well, <laughs> this is great. Yeah, I've, I've been looking forward to this conversation too, because I know we, you first introduced the ideas um, ages ago, a month ago, I think, a month ago or something. And uh, and I was intrigued, of course, uh, having heard some of your interviews to um, to do this. So yeah, yeah. well, you you know, I remember you very, very specifically, Harry Ram, because when I was on this lonesome journey, you know, and with that song in my, the background, lonely, I'm Mr. Lonely, and there this man, this person that came out really loudly and like supporting everything that I was saying, that was you. And I remember the first few posts I made about Trump, um, there was all these like, you know, the reciprocity from you was not only cool because I needed that, so thank you, because mm -hmm. there was literally like a few people that, you know, you, you've been through the same sort of um, journey with the, the backlash uh, of uh, supporting our lovely Donald. But I just remember you and it just made me laugh. And you know, you never can underestimate, you can never underestimate the impact that you're having on someone. And for, I would look forward to your post. I would literally laugh out loud. There have been moments, right, where I've been sat just like, I don't really get a chance to look at people's stories. I just like you know see whatever i can and there's so much information out there how can you keep in touch with it all mm -hmm. but when i would look at your stories i literally have spat my coffee out <laughs> make me laugh so much yeah. so the motivation to speak to you first of all is because i just love your spirit both just in mm -hmm. every way um i've been sort of following you guys and your energy is beautiful and um you're obviously a part of this movement. I saw you with uh, Sasha of uh, how to pass a camel through the eye of a needle. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, one second, one second. See, Kenzo wanted to get involved there. Can you hear that? Sorry, everyone. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, I um, you know, have been watching some of your stuff and you you done a chat with uh, Sasha Stone and um, just the generic theme is this lovely, light, vibrant energy you both have. And I think, and I thank you for it. I just thank you for it. So that has been one of the main reasons I wanted to speak to you because we're all on the same journey. Um, and yeah, so if you could just tell my viewers a little bit about yourself um, and the school of NAD. Yeah, we'd love to tell you something about that. Um, and uh, first of all, since you mentioned Sasha, I'll, 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 I'll start with addressing that because uh, yeah, I think he helped to bring people like you and I together I probably started following him around the same time, I imagine. <clears throat> and I did hear your interview, most of it just uh, before this call. It was great to, to hear you both speaking. One of the things I love about Sasha Stone is is his irreverent sense of humor. <laughs> Coming back to your initial point. Um, I love that. Yeah, yeah I, I've been on a spiritual path uh, for many years, so I, I, could, I could go on and give you a lot of background so it's hard even to try to encapsulate but sure. one thing I look for you know and this is what I say to people anyone who's looking for a spiritual mentor a guru if you will my, my advice is simple if you do not witness and see very clearly a wild eccentric sense of humor in that person he or she that master Within one minute, and I'm being generous, <laughs> my, my advice is to turn around and run as fast as you can. <laughs> um, and, and, and this is, you know, we could go into defining what that means, because I think it doesn't necessarily mean that that person doesn't have a, a wild eccentric sense of humor, but perhaps the resonance isn't there, you know, that you are not really in a, in a, on the same vibrational yeah. resonance. And in that case, I say again, run, you know, there, there's lots of, well, maybe not many, but there are <laughs> other <laughs> spiritual teachers out there. You know, this is my experience for sure. Uh, sure. I, one of my first, te the teachers that comes to my mind is my shiatsu master. I studied shiatsu oh, in nice. Toronto 
between 91, 93 and the first meeting, and I, it's interesting because I went to the massage school actually to, to do, they had an open house for the massage program, which I was looking into. My friend had recommended that I look into this. Um, and as fate would have it, they, they set it up so the shiatsu director came out into the lobby where we we're all waiting for the, you know, the discussion and, and tour of the school kind of thing. And he spoke first before the massage director. Okay. And the school is named after him. So it was appropriate that he had that honor. And as soon as I saw him walking into the room, I was like, Oh my God, who is this person? Right? Uh, he was from Japan um, and his English wasn't perfect, but there was something about him, his aura and this, this, this humor. I felt his humor right away. I was sort of big smile across my face. And sure enough, he, he came through. He made me laugh, I think, within Minutes. 30 <laughs> seconds probably. But, you know, and the thing is, not everybody else there got his sense of humor. Yeah. Right? He's a master. And I got it, and I yes. and I was I was I think almost immediately say I'm I'm going to sign Legend. up for that course. Forget, <laughs> forget about the massage programs. <laughs> yeah. So. You so, yeah, you see, you can pick up that energy. It's a bit like, um, you know, the the hatred people in the world have had for Trump, and no one can actually see mm. that he is the funniest. Oh he my is God! So funny, <laughs> and I see that because. My father's like that, you know, there's just this, that in, inappropriate or what may seem to be inappropriate humor. It's quite sharp and sure um, and what would appear to be rude, but it's actually a very black and white sense of speaking, you know, and, and he says it with this cheeky little smirk and smile. So when you meet people like that, it's this energy that they exude and what you've picked up with this, uh, this guy, this Japanese guy, you know, you can, it, it's unspoken words, but it's this sort of facial expression. Um, um, along with the energy that they have that you can actually embrace straight away so I get you I hear you on that 100% and that's how I felt about you like seriously it was it's an energy that comes through your posts right and an energy that we all carry that's just so individual to ourselves yeah that's a miracle isn't it because you know I like to make fun of well, text messaging. That's why I love one of the reasons I love emojis <laughs> and, <laughs> and memes. memes. <laughs> yeah, and GIF and even GIFs now. I, I'm using those now. <laughs> is because text messaging itself is inherently flawed. I've been saying this for years now because I, I had to learn the, the hard way. I got into so many silly, unnecessary arguments, you know, online with friends, strangers too, right? Because it, there's pixels on a white screen. You know, it's 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 virtually impossible to to read a text message. Yeah, you know, I was so much in agreement with that. As a person intent, that's why I love to use emojis, image, voice too. I, I hear there's a, a new app uh, that allows us to communicate with our voice more. It's one of the things that frustrates me about uh, most of the social media, right? Except for you're know, using Messenger or WhatsApp, something like that. I can use my voice to communicate rather than... Absolutely. Well, you know. that says a lot of what's happened in the last 10 years more acutely, isn't it, Harian? Because social media, through the advent of social media, we've had smartphones, social media, and smartphones haven't made us very smart. They've actually lessened the scope to communicate effectively. Um, and this reliance on, unfortunately, on our phone and the misinterpretation of one's emotions, tonality. I mean, I'm very much a feelings person, so I need to see people's face. I need to, I read people's uh, emotions. I read their energy. Sometimes like, you know, you can write something on text and you can, it can appear to be abrupt. I mean, I, I used to be very one wordy before because I just can't have a whole dialogue over text. It's just too laborious. There's so many things that I even want to write on Facebook and, you know, all the people that message me and stuff, but, one, it's just, it's, it's too much. To, it's better to feel a person when they're speaking like this. You can really sense the energy there. Um, yes. And it, we're all energy, right? We're all about energy. So yeah, the texting, communicating over, over that way. But uh, fortunately or unfortunately, that's become habit now or over WhatsApp and people literally writing to each other 
on that one is whereas you could have explained something far quicker face to face or speaking over the phone at least you know yes and, and just getting back to your point about you know donald trump let's get him out of the way he might come back again <laughs> no 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 still um, stick to donald yeah. trump we love him <laughs> oh i love i could talk about donald trump for the whole conversation because like you said he is he makes me laugh in fact he's <laughs> Again, so I see in a way as a master, as a master, and he's the first that I can, in my whole entire life, the first politician, if you can call him such, that makes me laugh. I can't think of one politician, really, <laughs> very few exceptions that, that have had that ability to make me laugh out loud. loud. I am you know, like just the, the way he has his pet names for all the players, <laughs> like you know, Pocahontas. <laughs> craziness <laughs> right it's just, there's an instant how people miss that um, in fact i miss it for a while i was i love I myself miss him now <laughs> i said i'm right? missing him i miss trump at the moment oh yes that, that was the other thing i admit i'm i'm suffering from withdrawals yeah <laughs> trump the oh, it was fun. it was funny right because up up until the election and you know even after but up until the election his his presence in my life was was amping up like all these. I couldn't keep up with all his speeches, and I wanted to listen to every one, right? Because <laughs> it's just so it's just so entertaining, and and his message I mean, is so important Absolutely. as well, right? And I don't want to miss anything, and, and then all of a sudden, boom! <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, what's your favorite yeah. Trump? What was one of your favorite Trump moments? Favorite Trump moments. Oh, that's that's a good. Good question. Well, let, let me question. help you out with one. I just one sprung to mind, which I just always laugh out loud in my head when I think about it was when he was with the Vatican. I don't know if you saw that. And he's he's caught oh. or someone's done a meme where he's tickling the Pope's hand. And, oh, yeah. he's, got that, <laughs> and he's got that. I shared that. And then when he's walking in front of the Queen in um, Buckingham Palace and he's just walking around like as if he doesn't like care and yeah. she's just behind oh, him. <laughs> Right. Of course, I was I wasn't following him back then. I, I wasn't following politics that closely because I I was for a long time on the left, and which meant more nihilistic. I saw the whole political game as as just this construct, and it was you know <clears throat> a chessboard that's being manipulated on both sides. Of course. Yeah. So you know, um, so. Trump opened up a whole new world, really, for me. It's interesting we speak about memes, um, because I was, if I was looking at any memes before my my awakening, really first really being able to see him for who he is again, um, the memes that I would view and even share were, you know, the on the other side. Looking back, they weren't funny, right? They were, <laughs> right? They're lacking imagination and and soul. And and so coming, this is one of the things I was so <laughs> joyous. I felt like coming home, coming to the the Trump side, if you will. Um, I I started to see all these, these hilarious memes and, yeah, and you know, going, going, wow, this is what I've been missing, right? The imagination and and you know, and that's why, as you said, <laughs> you've, if you've been witness to, I haven't yeah. stopped. Sharing. No, but it has it's provided us all the all a bit of. Um, humor and banter as us Brits say in these kind of not so um, easiest times because we're living in, I think amazing times. I mean, I'm so grateful, wouldn't you agree, to be um, privy to seeing the other narrative. Some people call it awaken, some, whatever label we wanna give it, you know, I'm not so um, big on labels, but we're on this other side where we're actually seeing um, this movement for what we think it is and you know the atrocities that have happened on the planet the sort of piecing together connecting all the dots um and then moving forward in this sense of you know emotional resilience and inner tenacity um and a, a sense of like humor that takes us through it because if we're all too serious it, it th that's not going to help and that's not going to help the energies at this time especially if you live here in the UK you have to have a sense of humor otherwise you're just all screwed <laughs> oh my god I can't imagine right now um if you want to share about that I, you, you remind me of um <clears throat> you know as a teacher you mentioned the school of nod um yes I've been 
besides doing the shiatsu training, I, I studied uh, kundalini yoga teacher training many years ago, and I've been also teaching in various capacities for a few decades now. Um, and I, one of the things I love to come back to is uh, the Toltec agreements uh, as brought to us you know, by Don Miguel Ruiz, his first book, The you know, Four Agreements. Um, I distilled them into two. I like to simplify things even more. I, and, <laughs> and so the way I described the, the two Toltec agreements, according to Hari Ram, is one, be impeccable with every word, thought and action yeah you know to live in total alignment i know you're into this because you know what you've been following and 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 then the corollary of course is the second all we need is really you know it's like the yin and yang the second one being of course do not take anything person this is where i've embellished do not take anything personally literally nor seriously absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Emphasis on the serious, <laughs> right? Because we, if, especially now, right? If, if we take this stuff seriously, it's, it's a, a one-way trip to, to hell, right? Yeah, yeah. All the shit that's going on right now on the planet, you know? hundred percent. And, and I like that, what you said there, because we need to employ this kind of energy. Um, we only have ourselves that are the masters of our own life and what we feel. There's not another person like us, is there? There's not another person like you on the planet. There's not another person like me um, on the planet. Last time I checked anyway. <laughs> you never know with all this AI. They might have you know, got another one of me somehow, but I haven't let them uh, go anywhere near me with a PCR test. <laughs> So well, that's, that's an interesting point too, because I, I don't know about you, but I, uh, uh, every once in a while somebody says, I, I met your twin. I know you have, and I always, I always well, show me some evidence, right? I think, well, <laughs> rarely do I even meet this person or see a picture, right? You have to meet this person, right? And so I'm also reminded of a Kuros, Kuros, what's this, the famous Polish director. He, he, he made this film back in the 80s called The Double Life of Ronnie. Right. It's in yeah. French. Um, based on this idea that we do have, we have a twin, a perfect twin, you know, identical twin out there somewhere um whether it's true or not uh, it's an interesting story and then of course the doppelganger you may be thinking of the doppelganger because you know if, if we have this belief that there are many dimensions or of course, parallel yeah. universes yeah it's yeah. a very fascinating 100 you mentioned twins. yeah hmm? i mean we talk there's a a lot um that's circulated uh, on social media or on the internet about the concept of twin flames um, and I think you mentioned that in, in some of your posts, um, both you and um, Kirtan, she's just so, um, Kirtan Ko, is that Hari Kirtan Ko? Is that, yeah. Sat Kirtan, I'm Hari Ram. Yeah, you're Sat Kirtan Ko. Hari Ram Singh, full spiritually, and her, and her name is Sat Kirtan Ko. Yeah, Sat meaning truth, I love that, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, you both are so cute together, and, and just the energy that you have is amazing. And I, you know, I, was, I thought she was going to come on today as well. <laughs> well, we could, we could. I'm sure we could. She is around. We could maybe <laughs> convince um, her. To yeah, no, she's her definitely more like. welcome. But yeah, the the concept no. of twin flames um, and your <laughs> twin. Could your twin be the so the opposite of your you in terms of the masculine or the feminine so part of you? What are your views really on, on how that sits with a soul coming into this planet as half, if that, if that question makes sense? So the whole concept of twin flames is that, you know, we need our other um, soul counterpart to complete us, right? Um, is that true? Do you, yeah. you, you resonate with that theory or that concept? Mm -hmm. Po. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no, one, no, one of my favorite words is po, actually. It's, um, and I, because I forget the, the Italian American linguists who came up with this word, because, because Osho, the master Osho, by the way, one of the greatest sense of humor of all Loved time. Him. Yeah, right. about, <laughs> um, Osho introduced me to this word, po, which, which means yes and no. It's a very good word, right? Helping us to navigate through this world of duality. You know, it's based on this, this 
theory, if you will, that, that there is no absolute yes nor absolute no in, in this world of Maya. Yeah. So yeah. That's my so I have to say po because I, I feel that you know twin flames and and before I even say anything more, I think I want to say that labels, I, I don't I don't like getting into labels too much because we people can easily get hung up and you know compartmentalize oh twin flame is this soulmate is that and then you know right there's this group group um consensus that twin flame yeah. is such and such so yeah i, I hesitate even to, to to refer to sat kirtan as my twin flame for this reason uh so often i just i used to use soulmate because um but yeah i think definitely there is a completion in a sense and yet if two people are not whole in themselves, then then they're going to be asking for trouble, whether it's their soulmate or whomever, right? Because, you know, this, that, that usually leads to codependency. Right? Brilliant. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and in, in our in our teaching, because we do work with singles and couples, where we're calling in more couples. In fact, tomorrow we have a tantra play shop here. For anyone, <laughs> nice. for any, for anyone happens to be in the Guatemala region. Uh, tomorrow evening, uh, we'll be serving cacao, the best cacao in the world, of course, here in Guatemala. And we do it this once a month called Tantra Play Shop for couples, although singles can also attend. Uh, we do a lot of, it's, a, it's super fun. And um, you should do stuff on Zoom. Yeah, well, this is it. We're, we're, we're bringing the, the couples work now into our online uh, offerings because up until recently we've been working primarily with singles right. in terms of helping people to call in to attract their ideal soulmate yeah right instead of looking right because a lot of you know these dating apps or whatever and is all about going out externalizing and looking to, where is she where is he right instead of coming into yourself becoming a whole more whole and thus attracting that ideal soulmate so that in a way that's a better term for me to say ideal soulmate because i feel that we have many soulmates in, in a certainly in, in a lifetime yeah 100 um, types of soulmates right yeah. and yeah. coming from the you know kundalini yoga tradition i like to remind myself that you know ekankar satnam we're one creator one creation we're all one you know we are God. God is Beautiful. manifest through all of us. So in a sense, you know, in a greater sense, there is no separation. Um, oh, beautiful. I love that. I absolutely love that because uh, very similarly, I am um, of that view. Um, I, I have kind of touched on these subjects, you know, the twin flame soulmates. I've pondered on these uh, concepts, these theories, or these um, evaluations and conclusions. And like yourself, um, you know, I draw upon being complete and whole as a person. And it's that Shiv Shakti energy where you're two complete people and merging together in divine unity. Um, and if you are operating from low vibrational, like fears, anxieties, etc., and looking towards someone to complete you, that is certainly the codependency energy. So this is what's going on around at the moment, this outwardly dependency on the twin flame uh, subject, which is why I brought it up. And um, when I first came across it, you know, I started reading a lot about it just because it had the association with the 1111 um, number. So I started seeing that so much myself. Um, and then I thought I, I was inquisitive and started you know, inquiring, inquiring, and the whole stuff with numerology started uh, coming to my the forefront of everything that was doing these synchronicities. Um, and I just have concluded, like yourself, that being complete and whole within self, in that sense of duality, and embracing the dark and the light within you, that we come to this centralized synthesis of our actualized being. Um, and therefore, we are in a place of non-judgment and in this exuberant state of 
this you know sense of humor come on these times are a little bit trying at the moment but you can see that in in everything that you're doing not to be disrespectful by any means but just having that sense of joy because now is all we have right now yes. is all we have and it took me a long time to get here but i really am with you on that one so thank you <laughs> Well, yeah, thank you. Well, it's it's nice, you know, when we can tie in these different elements because for me, humor is all about the heart. True humor comes from here. I mean, the belly is also obviously involved, but um, so to, to find true humor, then I think one has to come to that place of of self awareness, self love. Yeah. Right? Otherwise, again, we're looking outside of ourselves to be, you know, humored. And again, codependency, right? You you better make me laugh, right? Or else right? <laughs> I you'll fire. Okay. No, because I, I feel up for you making me cry. <laughs> yeah. The two people who are whole have have discovered the true humor for me, which is in the heart, from the heart. And thus then just their their coming together is humorous. The, the laughter comes spontaneous. Yeah. Not just when you're laughing all the time out loud. Of you know, the, the smile is there, the joy, and, and life then is a celebration. Uh, you know, codependency is, is none of that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so, shared yeah. misery. Yeah, right? so, ab absolutely. And through the practice of your kundalini um, yoga, I think um, there is a lot to say about that. I was actually speaking to a friend today, I think you may know her as well, Madonna. She's another yogi yes. and uh, absolutely my humor queen. She's so funny. And, yeah. you know, um, Kundalini yoga has been a big part of my last uh, 10 months. Um, and I'd never practiced it before. Has that helped me on this journey? Absolutely. In yeah. you know, awakening the Shakti energy within me, for sure, for sure, could feel it something happened that was just very, very divinely connected. So unexplainable and only felt within. So um, I guess that's that's also another connection that I had subconsciously with both of you. Um, and I just think that that um, natural, you can't fake this. You can't fake that kind of, like you said, you can't just be on tap, like make me laugh, otherwise I want a refund, <laughs> you know? I'm not getting into this relationship. If you're not going to make me laugh, get out of my face. <laughs> when I tell you to make me laugh, you know, it's not like that. Of course, you know, you can be a wailing, blub, blub, blubbering mess the other, you know, one minute, but it's about being present with our emotions, you mm -hmm. know? And, and that's with any relationship, be it on a fraternal, paternal, friendship, soul, lovers, um, and seeing that, you know, um, that beautiful well, yeah to be energy. to be to be real to be authentic is, is everything um and and, and the, yeah this this is one way that you know we would i think satkirtan and i both define that true ideal partnership is is that that you can feel completely alone at one with yourself aloneness is all oneness uh whether you're alone or you're with your sacred uh, partner you don't there's no need to change to adjust yourself that that's one of the obvious signs of the codependency too again right that we have to all you know alter ourselves in some way or we, this is uncomfortable and we all know that i this is why i spent a good part of the majority of my adult life solo because the relationships never really worked for me long term sometimes for a short period you know that honeymoon period, whatever, <laughs> you know, yeah. but to, 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 it's rare. That's why I say it's ideal soulmate is someone, good definition with whom you feel completely at one with yourself, that you, you still feel as if you're alone. You can be alone with yourself, with that other person. They're not going to change how you, in, a, in, in that sense anyway, you know, but of course, yeah. We do change. There's also that inspiration, the exalting, all of those beautiful things that a, a sacred partner brings. Yeah. Um, I just posted something last night on this theme about the, the language shared between soulmates. It is like a secret language. Um, and this is my nature too. I have, I have a Venus and Capricorn. 
<clears throat> that might explain part of it. Uh, <laughs> oh, bless. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because I had this, you know, as you if you probably noticed this <laughs> uh, exuberant. Uh, What's the sun sign? Extrovert kind of, sorry? What's your sun? Pisces, lots oh. of Pisces in my original chart. Yeah, so lots of what? With the Mars and Leo, so that helped to bring me out. And But the things, other things happen later on. So Because a lot of people see the Leo, the fire, because I had a rebirth. In fact, I had two rebirths on the same date. Wow. <laughs> on a Leo new moon, and I didn't plan it, of course. Um, July 31st, uh, 14 years apart. <clears throat> the first one was it was more significant in a sense, usually is. Um, but astrologers, interestingly, after that first rebirth and, and even later, they would they wouldn't often feel and see that the Pisces. Because my original chart is water, right? Just emotion, right? <laughs> Intuition, <laughs> and, you know. Um, it plays a part. It's very significant. In the trajectory oh, yeah. of your your script. One can drown though with a chart like I had, let me tell you. <laughs> um, so so it was good that I had a rebirth. And, and these astrologers would see that they felt that that fire energy, right? After after the rebirth experience I had in 2000, I, I changed my name. And this is not uh, this is after I got my spiritual name that was seven years previous, but I changed my legal name in 2000 coinciding with this rebirth experience that I had. Um, wow. But yeah, I'm getting, <laughs> going off the thread a little bit. Where no, no, I, no, no, that's fine. I, I find this stuff fascinating. So like, yeah, well, well, I wanted to fly, I, I made, I brought a pen because because sometimes I get so many things when you're speaking, because I wanted to, to, of course, address Madonna English. What, what a beautiful soul. Yeah. Um, I know she played a part in us. Um, coming together. In fact, it may have been through her that I'm connected with you. Possibly, yeah. Um, and she was, we we haven't been so much in touch recently. I kind of miss that. I know she's so busy with her <laughs> her network uh, um, and people like you. Because because there was a time when she and I were conversing almost nightly. That And that was the time leading up to our um, awakening, if you will, to, yeah. to Trump and, and the Q story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was, she was very, always, you know, very special memory that, um, because we, we literally came out around the same time. I think Satkirtan and I came out a little bit sooner. But yeah. then she came out, I was like, boom, she really like went, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, you see, everyone is coming, everyone's had their own kind of timelines with this and we're all coming together and, you know, for whether it's a moment in time or a certain um, phase, you know, where we're sort of communicating because, you know, we've all come in solo. Yeah. And it was, we've all experienced the backlash, the uh, vilification person. And if you look at the trajectory that we've gone on, it kind of parallels to that of Trump, right? Look at, you know, he's come out there in a position of leadership. Yeah, if we kind of symbolize it like that, you know, and connect it, come out in a position of leadership. And in the beginning, everyone hated him. Now, I think hate for me would have been a strong word. I was just asleep. I just didn't really care. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, there's this orange man. And I wasn't indifferent. I was like, oh, I don't really know. I don't have an opinion because I don't, I'm not clued up on the geopolitical side of things. So I don't have an opinion. And sometimes I feel that that's better rather than to um, hurl negative energy at people, you know, because mm -hmm. it, it and, and again, you know, it, even if, like the whole the whole world at one point probably was just seeing him with the through the lenses of the media so i guess my ne negative thing about him was yeah he's a little bit like abrupt but it just reminded of me of my dad <laughs> my dad is like that so i could identify with it and i had this subconscious love i love that level of humor uh, that's why I find Sasha's sense of humor hilarious. That's why Madonna and I get on really well. That's probably why you and Madonna got on well. So going back to that, you know, these mm -hmm. connections that we've all had have been for a very specific reason. Mm -hmm. And there is no mistake in these synchronicities, is there? All these, you know, that nothing's a coincidence. It's been divine, divinely yeah. um, orchestrated, Harry Ram, for sure. It was, yes, and yes, it, it was a tumultuous uh, process. At uh, the same time, around that same time, we, Sakirtan and I discovered the, the walkaway campaign, 
which has uh, unfortunately been taken down like Madonna and so many other brave souls taken off of uh, Facebook and other, and I think maybe YouTube. Brilliant, what a community that that this man created, I was his name, but um, the Walk Away campaign. It grew to half a million people. Wow. Just, uh, uh, you know, the Facebook uh, group. And um, <clears throat> yeah, with, with Trump, it's interesting, right? Because I do have memories. I um, actually, I was born the same year as Charlie Freak. I know you're also friends with Charlie. Um, we were both born in Canada in the same year. So I, I can relate to Charlie in many ways as I do with Sasha. Um, and so I remember like in the eighties still when, when David Letterman, the original Letterman show, the late night show, it was funny and it was, it was, it was a pioneering show. They, they were yep. brilliant. He had some amazing writers and it was really outside the box. This is before he, he sold out and went you know, to CBS. And Donald Trump was, was a regular guest on that show along with many other really interesting characters. And I still have, I have a memory right, of seeing Trump and, and enjoying, right? He, he was always, you know, willing to laugh at himself to loud Letterman yeah. To, to deprecate, self deprecate, you know, he took it well. He, yeah. he was always very genuine and gracious and funny too, right? Because, you know, Letterman was funny back then too. So I had these memories of, you know, Trump kind of coming into my awareness at different times growing up, even, you know, in my 20s, 30s. And yet still somehow that that gap happened because I never watched The Apprentice, or anything, but somehow this, this split happened where by when he all of a sudden came on the, the presidency, and I wasn't following his campaign leading up to that. I wish yeah. I had. Yeah. Some really, talk about funny moments when he was debating Jeb Bush. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it doesn't get any funnier than that. Uh, There's one moment in one debate where he had Jeb Bush on one side and some other stupid, dumbass Republican on the other. And he literally did this during the debate. He went bang, bang. He <laughs> shot them both and, and just went. <laughs> Knock them both out of the race, right? But you know, and, but it's, but his that, that, it's his one-liners. It's sharp, short, witty oh. one-liners. But also, under the underpinnings of his his um, humor is intelligence. Yeah, really. So, no, so, well, they say his IQ, I, and I believe this. He, his IQ, it, only one president. I would like to learn more about him. I can't remember. Who, only one president, apparently, of the forty-five. Because let's not say forty-six, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, want to, <laughs> you want to start laughing we can we can talk about by it but maybe whoever that robot is bless him <laughs> <laughs> that sock pocket puppet is sock sad, puppet, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> only one president out of 45 had a higher iq than trump i believe that completely in fact i, I he must have been a very brilliant person because yeah trump is a genius in my he mind is. He's an absolute genius and how everything has been designed as well. They've actually put in the comedy value for this. I mean, that somewhere in this narrative that it was designed so that they knew that, look, let, let's keep it playful, you know, in, in, at some of the times, because uh, let's be honest, at the moment on the uh, battlefield, it's just the disparity b between humanity at the moment is just like that. You know, the divide is so big. And, and unfortunately for the interim period, it has to be right. And we have to continue in our evolving on our journey just to see, and being congruent with our journey um and not really kind of getting so affected by outside noise and this is what's kind of happening in these communities um the truth of communities as well which is why i found you um really really appealing to just speak to as a friend really you know and that's like what i with my channel or wh wh however i started this there wasn't anything you know, um, premeditated or uh, thought about. Um, and in fact, I've lost uh, my career over this. <laughs> and yeah. Telling the truth. Well, right? yeah. But, well, yeah, this, oh, go, but, go ahead. You know, I was just saying that, but this is all the divine plan and, and it just feels right. So something within this energy just feels right. And I, I, just in, I just know internally that I'm going in the right path, even irrespective of the outside noise. So it's how we navigate our way through this when we're being attacked, vilified, judged, and even with people who are claimed to be on the same side. So 
my question to you is really that this is in my view, my view, uh, just, you know, because people gun people down for their opinions now, it's just a view that this is a war on consciousness. Yeah, it's a psychological war, an information war. Um, and even though there is this big disparity in humanity right now, we are ushering into, you know, um, better times, but it's just people put too much of an impetus on timelines. So what mm -hmm. has your experience been in, you know, for both of you uh, since you've been awake in these last, say, 12 months mm -hmm. or if it's 10 months or 12 months? Yes, th thank you. I, I, I was going, just going to address that theme because um, I, I made some mention to the tumultuousness, the, um, the, the tumult of, <laughs> of that coming out, um, of, of leaving, you know, walk, the walk away. It was just a perfect name for, for me, the, the walk away campaign, because that's literally what I, I walked away from the left, finally, and from that nihilistic school again, that it's all the whole thing is a game. There's nothing we can do about it. We're, you know, that's why I call it the school of nihilism. You know, those people who are not pro Biden, but they're not pro Trump either, right? I have no time for that nonsense now. <laughs> Say, oh, you're a nihilist. Okay, thank you. Because, but I had to go through a major, major shift in, in the last year. It's at Sat Kirtan. Um, and unlike I, I, and I saw it coming in, in retrospect because I, I was doing some purging of my social media. I used Facebook mostly, primarily. I don't know how people have time to do all the Instagram and Twitter. Trust you know? me, it is <laughs> it's a full-time job. And you know, now yeah. that I, it is my full-time job, effectively, not for long, because I, I have other plans at the other side of this. But it is it is consuming for sure. So yeah, I, I literally I, I was in this process before coming out, my support for Trump purging people from my network, which is good because the trolls still showed up. There was still some hidden, you know, that I didn't get to. And, and then even strangers coming onto my page and some horrible language. And, and the interesting thing, uh, Alpas, is that I was on the other side before. So I, I had some, you know, <laughs> some empathy for these people because I was making fun of Trump supporters previous. Yeah. Um, I don't think I got as nat. I don't think, no, I know I wasn't as nasty as he. That's the difference. I don't know about you, but the language, the language is unreal. Because what I said to people is, I, I'm, not, I'm not against, you know, difference of opinions. In fact, this is good. This is healthy. This is what democracy is supposed to be about. If you cannot communicate in a respectful, you know, with <laughs> some modicum of respect and, and, harmony then you're gone like i'm going to unfriend you first if you continue with that nonsense i'm going to block you and my blocking lists have got <laughs> <laughs> yes i i hear you i definitely hear you um that has been um something that i i dealt with from day one and sadly and i probably get shot for saying this but it is what it is and i'm being black and white about it and saying it you know assertively it's through observation of people's behavior that I come, I have drawn up to uh, draw to this um, conclusion. So within the Asian community, um, there was a lot of annihilation about what I was uh, talking about, just specifically to me. I'm not saying that generalizing here, but I, upon speaking to other um, awakened Indians and Asians or however, whatever label you want to put it, or people from my community, it was like, what the hell is Alpa doing? Um, and the worst abuse I got was literally, and if I was to put it just in my own world, just for me, I'm just before, because everyone gets so sensitive, right? It's just so sensitive. And you just said the one word out of place. And it's just this hypocrisy that we have, which I just find a load of bullshit, to be fair. Yeah. And excuse the profanity there, but I had a lot of abuse and I, I, I'm with you there because it was so conceited, full of contempt and hatred. And what we as observers, I feel can do, and this is not me telling anyone what to do, what we can do is step away, step outside of that, from that non-judgment place, because these are constructs that have governed the world for hundreds of years. So this energy has permeated into the psychological makeup of humanity to bring about this uh, mental war um, and psychological traumas that people re don't even realize that they have to react and respond from a place of contempt, anger, 
and criticism. Um, so I'll give you an example uh, in response to what you're saying about, you know, how obnoxious this is. Some of the truthers uh, or whatever labeled researchers, truthers, uh, an alternative nar narrative, whichever, like yourself, I'm not great with the, with the labels, Harry Ram. But right now, I'm sure you must be seeing on the, the Facebook arena is people vilifying fellow truthers, yeah? Um, because things don't happen within a timeline and uh, things don't happen uh, according to what this person may say. So immediately they get completely vilified. He's a fraud. He's a scam. He's selling things on his, on his uh, page and he's this, he's that. We're forgetting that we are fighting a global psychological spiritual war. It's not conventional, right? Mm -hmm. We're not in a conventional war where we've got like machete guns at our Oh, throw every five minutes or we're on a battlefield. Well, we are on a battlefield. Thank God, thank God, thank God for that, right? It, 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 otherwise, there would be a lot of blood uh, yes. spilled. And, 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 and it's a war. And there's going to be casualties, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what's that's what the scandemic presents. This the war that people mm -hmm. are innocent people are are dying with this bioweapon that's been. Um, exposed to to humanity, but it's intention and the perspective where people are not seeing this. So, yeah. well, yeah, well, getting back, yeah, getting yeah. back to your question, because yeah, I, I wanted to address that more. The, the war on consciousness I think is is perfect uh, description from my perspective as well, because my my orientation is about the soul primarily, so sure. spirit, and I think unless someone's coming from that place again, from the heart, from the soul, it, it's easy to get dragged down, whether you're on the Trump side or against Trump, you know, and unless we can rise above it, transcend that duality, cultivate neutral mind awareness. So sort of the yoga practice for me is so essential, right? Then we can rise, then we can even see the humor that then, only then can we see the humor in it. We can laugh about it, right? You know, uh, non-attachment, non-attachment is the goal. Because we don't know, because I know people, like, I think you were alluding to this, how people in the truth movement are frustrated. Some of them, are, the hanger, the people are not fully in. They're going, well, why didn't it, you said this was going to happen January 6th and this and that. And, you know, and they're complaining, like, and you guys, you know, QAnon is all, it's a PSYOP, it's all this, right? Like, <laughs> come on, you're, you're, first of all, drop that linear time bullshit right you know we, we 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 can give some indications about what when this might happen but it's a maybe we don't know if we're talking about the future we're talking about the future the future hasn't happened yet absolutely right? yeah so for me prophecy too i i don't like to get hung up on you know i have a page prophecy 2021 now it used to be prophecy 2020 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love prophecy, but you know, people get hung up on that too. If the prophecy doesn't happen when it was, you know, predicted to happen, then the prophet is bullshit. It's a false prophet. Well, yeah. not necessarily, right? Yeah, it's yeah. true. And these people that get hung up on timelines, I mean, I do see, look, I try to be fair and, and look at people's points of views because we are at frustrating times. We want to see the justice. People are well-intended. We want to see the justice for the children. We want all of that. I get that. But where we are in a movement where the media has lied to us for years and we have tolerated media deception, then if we've got the likes of you or me or ex-truther that have become um, slightly big names. I don't like, again, saying the label side of big, small. I don't look at it like that. We're all the same. And there's nothing to become a celebrity in this movement. That's definitely not the agenda for anybody. But uh, I feel anyway, this is about, you, you know, the, the humanity being together in this moment in time, because we are we are evolving and we're going into a new yug, into a new era. And, you know, we are our greatest enemy is the devil. Right. And the demonic energies that are there. And we, you know, unilaterally, universally, collectively should be raising our vibrations and not fighting them off each other um and but the thing is these constructs of the cabal get in the way so unfortunately people playing in uh, placing an impetus on timelines are suffering a lot because 
Yes, it is frustrating. We don't know really how this is going to play out, Hari Ram, do we? We don't. We no. and no, you know, any time that we we hold an expectation such and such to happen, such, then we're we're setting a, ourselves up for disappointment, aren't we? Yeah. Always. I mean, it's better e even if it does happen. It's better not to have that expectation, right? Either way, right? Because when it when it happens, like. Yeah, <laughs> wow, right? We can celebrate. Wahi Guru. Isn't that the beauty, though? That sort of serendipity, that like uh, managing our expectations not to expect in the timeline. When we feel that, oh my God, moment when it happens, when we least expect it, could that be a possible timeline? Is there three different narratives going on at the same time? It's the questions we say to ourselves and ask ourselves and the way we look at things, you know? And, and but again, running with the theme of this conversation and I like to call it conversation because I don't see myself as an interviewer I just see you and I as my fellow brother um, that has offered so much good energy to the community both um, both of you have and I find it um, this is what we need to celebrate celebrate each other celebrate people who are striving to move and make that effort to ascend and raise their frequency um in that unity yes and yeah i i agree completely it, it always essentially in the end it's, it's about us it's about our relationships our brothers soul brothers soul sisters um and you know along that same line i i'm i'm in a way i'm more drawn to the mainstream in a sense it's funny another thing that trump helped to awaken in me is a, is a love and gratitude for fox News. Sasha <laughs> <laughs> mentioned Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I love you know. This is I haven't said this to Sasha. If I if hopefully we'll do another interview because I one of my dreams is to see Sasha Stone on Tucker Carlson tonight. <laughs> <Can you> imagine. <laughs> uh, I love Tucker Carlson. And, <laughs> You know, Lauren, and the thing I love about it, you know, people like Lauren having those regulars like Raymond Arroyo, these people are, they're real, you know, they're not into the hocus pocus. They, they, they may not even have looked at Q, I don't know, they, 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 they say it so at least, like QAnon, what's that? I love when, when, when Tucker says QAnon. Okay. <laughs> but they, they work for Fox News. And I wanted to say this because this is applies to, to us too. I know and people like Madonna, is how we can stay just like Tucker. We have to try and play the game if, unless you want to be debarred from, from, I'm still on Facebook, thank God, you know, because that's my, been my main uh, channel, right? For sharing, as you mentioned so beautifully and <laughs> for your response, sharing that. Um, I don't want to get, uh, you know, suspended or canceled. I, I have had to deal with some uh, restrictions I'm happy to say, yeah, because I, <laughs> you know, if you're doing the right job, right, you're gonna yeah. get some, you know, some kind of uh, penalty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> People that I really, you know, look up to, uh, you know, like Madonna, you know, I, you know, all blessings, and you know, Sasha. I don't know if Sa has Sasha been. Yeah, he's, I think he's in Facebook jail. But I think he might be out now. Oh, I think they've just suspended him to be able to speak for a few months. I don't even know. He didn't actually even, poor guy, didn't actually do anything. But again, um, this is, this I think was all to demonstrate at those times to see the level of censorship and how we are being silenced for having what we thought was democracy and freedom of speech in, in our, on our planet. And that hasn't been the case. Um, but this is to highlight and show people. So as we con continuously are evolving in this movement, uh, the great global awakening for the last, um, it's actually for 10 years to be fair, but you know, for the purpose of people to understand what's going on more acutely since this um, scandemic uh, came to the forefront on, of existence in our lives. Um, but there is so many things that we can draw from this year um, about how we evolve as human beings and how we interact with our brothers and sisters and how we are to each other. And I think that um, that's fundamentally the most important thing for me 
we claim no, like you come into this world empty handed and we go empty handed. It's what we do within our soul and our energy here that how we make people feel. And, you know, how do you left, how do we leave people after a conversation? You know, is, are we feeling in a high vibration or a lower vibration? And this is the thing that I claim not to be any guru or anything like this. And I think you share a very similar kind of energies. How do we leave people after they speak to us? You know, high, even if it's something that you're saying controversial, yeah? It's like dropping a bomb, but with a little cheeky smile and running away, yeah? And in that sense of like, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> you know, that sense of cheek, tongue in cheek and naughtiness, but you're, you know, conveying a very important point. Um, but again, when we go into the entrapment of ego, this is where the suffering happens. Um, my truth is better than your truth. You said this, he said that, petty, petty quabble. So I am aligned to your energy for, for that. And I say it again in just gratitude, in absolute gratitude. And there is, there's a massive difference between false flattery and a genuine authentic appreciation for someone's soul. My soul recognizes your soul. So, you know, it's so important for, for, for me to have had you like chat to me. I'm so grateful, Harry Ram, because we all have something to offer in this journey yeah. each and every single one of us on this planet. Likewise, dear sister. And, you know, we are, we are on the verge where it is, it's already dawning that this new, this, the sad you, you mentioned, call it the age of Aquarius, whatever. I know that the, that conjunction of uh, Saturn and Jupiter on the last winter solstice was very significant. Some say that was the, the, the marker for the, the Aquarian age. Uh, again, whatever you want to call it, we're in it. It's happening. So from that, again, that broader perspective, the spiritual neutral mind perspective, everything is perfect. Everything is perfectly aligned. There's nothing to fret about. Let's keep laughing. <laughs> Try to see the light. You know, it's like, you know, I, I love one of the reasons I love Laura Ingram is her sense of humor again. And, and one of her regulars, Raymond Arroyo, he comes on and, and they laugh together. Every show that they do to, when he comes on, <laughs> if you haven't seen Raymond, they have something called Friday Follies, for example, on Friday. <laughs> and they're, they're having a, a gas because they're making fun now of, of uh, Sleepy Joe. Right, so, yeah, <laughs> going back to the little Trump, sleepy Joe. <laughs> how many times did we hear you asking me how can I pick one time when Trump? Maybe I can't because he's always making me laugh. Every time he said sleepy Joe, Every I started time. laughing you know, <laughs> and poke on. <laughs> Well, you got to admit, yeah, like Sleepy Joe Biden, he has provided us entertainment as well, because it's not the real one, yeah? And this poor gimp who is playing the role of the real one, I mean, Bajara, you know, Bajara, I mean, poor thing in Hindi, is, uh, is you know, really bearing the brunt of something he didn't actually do. <laughs> Imagine being this Biden right now. He's probably thinking, I don't know who I am, I'm just a body double. <laughs> and uh, I'm bearing the brunt of the real Biden's crap, who mm. I, uh, I believe is not around anymore. I know that, well, I'm a storyteller and just briefly, you know, along with the Kundalini Yoga the, and uh, <clears throat> Nad Yoga, Kirtan, those things, one of my other passions as well as dance is um, psychodrama. And I've been developing this practice over many years now, decades. In fact, I, I saw there's a new film that came out not too long ago, uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky on his treatment of what he calls psychomagic which is basically psychodrama, right? If you don't know Jodorowsky, I highly recommend him. You know, a great filmmaker. Anyway, um, I mention this because the essence of psychodrama is storytelling. Yeah. Which is the essence of all shamanic practice, right? Shamanism is the root of all of yoga and healing arts, right? Because it predated these uh, practices. and. And the very heart of shamanism is storytelling. It's a story. And, you know, and I know, uh, you know, s s our brother Sasha speaks and, and Charlie Stone is why I, I feel such a, you know, alignment with those two among a few others is that they, they speak about the story, right? The narrative and, and how, you know, it's panning out the, the larger, the smaller story between, 
you know, within the, the bigger picture, trying to get a broader perspective and how we can shift that. And I, I love Sasha's efforts because I know, you know, speaking to us and to you and many others, he he's repeating that same, you know, prognosis, that, that same uh, method, if you will, of coming back to the self, realizing the Christ itself, removing those, cutting those cords. You know, we use obsidian. We have obsidian dagger here, right? Uh, from Chiapas is gold obsidian. Wow. Very good cutting cords, right? Yep. Cutting those cords, the cabal just go. Psh, Absolutely. We're free. I love that. We're free, right? Um, no, I love that. Actually, can you just briefly before we go, um, just anything else that you want to add to that you feel that you'd like to share with the audience, uh, our audience, nothing is mine, is ours, our audience. Um, but the shamanic principles you've just mentioned, and I love this thing about cord cutting. Yeah, I do that every day. We just cut cords with all these negative energies that try to infiltrate infiltrate us like these parasitic cords because around our auric field we're all beautiful we're all beautiful human beings our, our souls are like vying for self-expression but we're so convoluted in the layers of what the cabal have done so you know sense of self sense of self is just so removed and we have this um it's a struggle for people to really be able to see what's going on and not being awake or whatever word you want to use there to really truly realize, yeah, realize that actually nothing is, everything is happening in so many different timelines. Um, and the illusionary aspect of things and time um, is, is so is so apparent to me, but because people are suppressed um, through consumerism, globalism, what we consume, and our pineal gland is is completely suppressed. Um, therefore, we're having this very left brain thinking, and not seeing uh, things only from um, people seeing things only from a three D lens. So, kind of went off on the tangent there, but like I think you get the gist. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, a couple of things came to mind. So, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> somebody shared with me this short video, and it's like, wow, it's like, what's going on? It's from Africa. I'm not sure which country, but the students in a school are running. It's like it's like my saying in the beginning, right? If, if, if they don't ex express that sense of humor, turn around and run as fast as you can. Yeah. These students, they're all running. Some of them are jumping from the second floor of the building. And they're all running away as fast as they can. And you know what, you know what? And I saw the image first and then the caption. They were trying to inject these African children with the vaccine. And they're literally running out of the building en masse, the whole student body, right? Wow, right? That, this is what, this is the, the stuff that I look for and I, celebrate and I share right because I want people to see yes that there are things little things big but you know you mentioned linear time too so that, that brings me back to the psychodrama the essence of psychodrama is realizing that of course with the kundalini yoga as a, as a foundation one can easily see and know that linear time as such is an illusion and this is why again why I, I say to people we drop this this expectation timeline nonsense right you're just setting yourself up for stress anxiety why is it not you know you said trump was gonna be you know put in the 19th friend right uh, <laughs> linear time is an illusion yeah again rise above that and yeah. know that everything is is in perfect alignment and you know and as we just again realize step into our our christed light if you will our buddha nature then we are doing our part, even if it just means sitting at in your home, just meditating quietly. You know, we each have a, a role to play. We do, we yeah. do. And I am on a parting note now because I'm aware we've gone on for for an hour, and I usually get, get people's attention for about an hour. 
<laughs> and then I think that people switch off after a while. So I think an hour was always nice to have a conversation. And it's been an absolute pleasure because it's stuff like this that I really, really enjoy. But where can we find you? So here. on we've got YouTube, you're on the School of NAD and you have your own page on Facebook um, mm -hmm. and with all the, your information. And if on a parting note, is there anything that you want to say? Well, let, let's do a part two then, because uh, I also, one of the things that we have, and we want to, with your permission, of course, uh, like to put this on our, we have a radio internet program as well called We Got the Nad, it's N-A-A-D, <laughs> on Podbean and all the, you can find it on, you know, you, uh, iTunes and Spotify and things like that. Oh, brilliant, yeah. If you're happy with that, you can also find, I, the, we, we split the Sash interview into two parts. Yeah. Uh, radio I love radio I grew up listening to radio and it's nice too isn't it because if if uh, you know if you're looking at this, this is great I mean I love that we can do the video interview as well but then the eyes have to be engaged right with yeah. radio you can go about doing what whatever right and yeah. You can <laughs> yeah no I hear you and and in voice there is so, there's so much um emotion and expression in and the tonality of our voice um, yes. I'm quite sensitive to that, you know, people's tones. And I used to find it really difficult because being a very sensitive soul, but if somebody spoke in a way that was abrupt, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> but, you know, but you learn as you evolve in, in every way that, you know, how to decipher people's tones and, and interpret their intention, you know. So, yes, I'd be happy definitely to do that. I think oh. maybe we'll get one with Madonna as well. You, Madonna and myself. Yes, I think. Yes, that would that would I actually be, done one with her today. Uh, we, we, we spoke about Kundalini and it's just I, like ironic that in, in one day that um, I'm speaking about that. So uh, on, on a parting note, I think this um, the message of Kundalini Yoga is important in the principles of how we um, are, you know, spiritually looking after ourselves, you know, our spiritual hygiene, because we can get so caught up in the doldrums of these energies on the digital uh, uh, platforms and getting const in those wars. And it's just so important to recalibrate um, and synthesize and just neutralize the charges, any of these negative sort of things that can have on us. So with that said, Hari Ram, I really, really, really enjoyed this today. Thank you so much. Um, I definitely want to do so, uh, something regularly with you. Um, and okay, yeah, well, so, if, so the last parting words I'll say is, is uh, our radio show, check it out because uh, Alpa will be featured along with Sasha and others. You, I'll just briefly say, yes, the Kundalini Yoga community, there's an interesting parallel, uh, which is, of course, Yogi Bhajan and Donald Trump. Yogi Bhajan has been maligned and slandered like, oh my God. And I, I'm not saying that he's, he lived a perfect life like an angel, but there's a lot of stuff out there. That's another podcast, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's very interesting to see how these stories are, are playing out. Well, I, I'd like to talk about that now, you know, in the next one about the spiritual leaders um, and the impact that they're having now and the awareness about some of the things that they've got up to these are not this is just generically all the spiritual leaders now are at subject to a lot of scrutiny because yeah. unfortunately with the exposing and exposure of stuff to do with children um and then us finding out about things such as mother Teresa and you know unfortunately everyone has god of god, god, of god. pardon god of god yeah yeah yes yeah, and Oprah Winfrey, oh God. <laughs> so these people are all incriminated um, and we have to use our own intuitive compass to see how we feel about that. But there is a reason this information is being um, exposed. You know, there's a naivety that humanity has had for so long because um, let's be kinder to ourselves. It's because we see the good in people. So we can't beat ourselves up about it. We see the goodness in people and what we see in ourselves is what we see and others so it's so important to leave people in that uplifted kind of energy um because you know what today is all we have now is all we have so part two awaits us and i cannot wait thank you harry ram so much thank you